Wood County's live local news starts right now. This is BG24 News, live at 5.30. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BG24 Public Affairs. I'm Jacqueline Gideon. And I'm Danielle Griffith. Valentine's Day was last week, and some might have been let down. So we have some guests here tonight that are going to tell us about how to spice up our relationships. But as always, let's get a look at some of the today's headlines from Gemma Schultz. Gemma? Thanks, Jacqueline and Danielle. Governor John Kasich delivered his annual State of the State address last night. He talked a lot about jobs and taxes, but did take some time to touch on higher education. These uh, community college presidents and four-year presidents, they're heroes. You know, what they've decided for the four-year schools, that only 50% of the money they get from the state to run their operations will go to them upon a student's graduation not on enrollment, on graduation, because we want kids to graduate. But I don't think you'll hear members of the Faculty Association call administrators heroes. President's Day was Monday and hundreds of prospective students visited campus with their parents. The Faculty Association took the opportunity to spread the word about the administration cutting 100 members. They met the families outside of the Wolf Center in the Union to hand out information about the cuts. They were also in the union during lunch to answer any questions. Let's take a look at our Black Swamp weather forecast with Lacey Hagen. Lacey, tell us what's going on out there. Hi, Lacey Hagen here with a look at your local Black Swamp forecast. Currently, our conditions are at about 23 degrees, but let me tell you, it does not feel like 23. We are about 13 degrees cooler, which is making us feel like 10 degrees outside. So for all your classes, you better make sure you're bundled up. For tonight's forecast, we're going to dip down to 13 degrees, so again, really cold. Don't go out if you don't have to. And we will have a little bit of a breeze at about 15 miles per hour. For tomorrow's forecast, we're going to get up to 28, so we'll still be a little bit below freezing, but not as bad as we were today. And for tomorrow night's forecast, we will only get down to 20, which is better than what we've been the past couple nights, and we will have um, some showers late. So if we take a look out at our um, national precipitation map, we can see that there's going to be some um, storms developing in Texas. Those will make our way here over the weekend, but nothing too major. We just have a couple flurries out here in BG right now, but nothing too bad. So for our regional precipitation, like I said, we are seeing a few flurries, and that looks like that's pretty much the story for the north. Um, and as we take a look at our temperatures, we are at about 23 degrees. So everybody around us is experiencing the same thing. It is bitter cold out there. Try and stay inside if you can. So for our five day forecast, it will get up to about 28 degrees on Thursday. And we will pretty much have that same temperature about 35 degrees um, Friday to Sunday. And Monday will get just a couple degrees warmer, but nothing to get too excited about. But I don't know about you, I cannot wait until spring and it gets a little bit yes, warmer out there. Yes, me either. So. Saying goodbye to these cold temps. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lacey. Venting on Facebook is not uncommon nowadays, but what about revealing some deep secrets? Students at California State University Sacramento have a Facebook page to do just that. Most of us have them. Those innermost thoughts that we don't necessarily want to share, afraid of what someone might think. But at Sac State, some students are fessing up, having their deepest, darkest secrets shared on this Facebook page, Sac State Confessions. Reading it's fun, it's just I wouldn't participate in it. It doesn't say who runs the page, but says all posts will remain anonymous. And they've got hundreds of confessions, from I really like my best friend, but he is in a relationship, to I don't know how to check out books at the library. But there's more serious ones, too. I think about suicide every day, but I'm too afraid to get help from my friends or professionals. Psychologist Deborah Moore. You don't deal with a serious issue by simply writing something on an anonymous page. She says the creator of the page probably didn't intend for it to address serious problems and says it's not the right place for people to seek help. And what's posted here is no different than writing it in a personal journal. And there are going to be some writers and posters who that brings some degree of comfort to. It's not effective particularly, it's pretty small, it's not going to last, it's not going to solve anything. Most Sac State students we talked with say the more concerning confessions shouldn't even be here. It's definitely not the page to be posting uh, some of the more serious ones at. It's kind of sad to see things like that on there. Because if it was really that like important, they should be telling friends and family, not posting it to everybody on Facebook. And Moore says when people really face their problems, 
they won't be using Sac State Confessions for help. That's all I have for news tonight, but make sure you check out BG24 News tomorrow night for the latest breaking news from your campus and community connection. Back to you guys. Thanks, Gemma. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, this is Andrea Adams-Miller from IgniteYourRelationships.com. Mm -hmm. um, we're here to talk about relationships and dating and, you know, spicing up your love life. Absolutely. Uh, Valentine's Day was last weekend and my boyfriend and I didn't go out, we <laughs> stayed in, we watched Into the Universe by Stephen Hawking or well, something. Well that sounds extremely romantic. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, Valentine's Day for a lot of people is um, not quite what they expected. When, when you have an expectation of Valentine's Day, if you haven't told your partner what you're expecting, then it's really difficult for them to be able to follow with that. What happens is then they really misunderstand what it is that they desire or what that they want or what you desire and want. And so they can't provide that to you if they have no idea what it is that you're looking for. So part of communication in a relationship is just being frank and honest and saying things like, you know what would be really important to me is if on Valentine's Day, if I received a small token or a gift, because I like to receive things, let's <laughs> <laughs> I like to have stuff um, or to say I would like something that's like written down on paper so that it means something to me it means something valuable so just to just the little things that matter so yeah. well and if you truly are somebody who likes something small if you're somebody who likes really big things then you yeah. need to be very honest and say I like big diamonds and I expect <laughs> yep. them or a new car and then you might need to check your dating pool because you might not be seeing the right person so that's one of the things that you can do to really amp things up well, what about, not the little things, but what about like date ideas? Because I like going out to dinner or like movies, but I think they're getting kind of boring. Do you have any other ideas? Well, well, like creative things. Yeah. I mean. uh, absolutely. Well, it's cold right now, so it's Valentine's Day. We're in Ohio. It's freezing, so it's not like we're going to be surfboarding or anything around here. But one of the things that you can do that are really fun is if it happens to be snowing, is to go on a snowball fight with your partner. It's a lot of fun. And then you plan to have hot chocolate and marshmallows later, snuggle up with a great blanket and have a lot of fun. Um, and if if you do like to go out, look for different opportunities to go out to eat that are maybe less expensive. You know, you, if you're going to college, you certainly you have to monitor your budget. It's perfectly okay to use a coupon, um, but talk to your partner about that ahead of time first because some people are very offended that you would take them to uh, go out to eat and use a coupon. But if you can do more things, that's really more beneficial. So some other more creative things are find out what kind of music's playing in your area. Hang out at a local club, go see a lecture, go find out some speakers that are coming to your college. I know I've spoke here at Bowling Green State University before and we talked about uh, dating and sex and intimacy. So we had a really good turnout. So those might be a really great opportunity for you to spice things up as well. If the spicing up doesn't kind of work, like and you feel like the dating's getting old, like the movies are getting corny, like what is that thing you can do to kill the dull moments? Like, <laughs> it's just <laughs> not working. <laughs> well, you know, part of that is if things are really dull, you really have to maybe evaluate your relationship. Is this a relationship <laughs> that you want to be in for the rest of your life? So be thinking about that, like, hmm, four years from now, do I want to be sitting here watching the same corny movies with the same <sighs> corny person? Or maybe is it time for me to move on? There's a lot of valuable people out there and maybe this was the boyfriend or the girlfriend for the season and not for your lifetime. I was actually going to ask you about that. Um, how do you know when you're going through a dull phase or when is he's just not right for you? Well you, you instinctively know those kinds of things and you'll notice that all of a sudden you're getting jealous and it's because you're jealous because you're probably checking out the people uh, yourself so you're like Hmm, he's pretty cute. And all of a sudden you're jealous at your partner because you think they're checking somebody else out. Chances are it's probably you because you're ready to move on and you're already noticing those red flags. And your friends will tell you because they'll <laughs> notice that you're not happy and that you're trying to force that person to be who you want. Good. So what are some spontaneous things that we can do or just to give you like that little kick like, Oh, absolutely. More fun, just oh, on the fun side, sure, not sure. so serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times, like what here right now, us, us laughing and being playful is one of the most important things that you can have in your relationship. I say that too many people work on a relationship and what they need to do is spend time playing together. So go do fun things, go laugh. 
see funny movies. And when something happens and you're not sure of it, or if you feel like you want to uh, say something that might cause an argument, be playful about it. And, and first of all, this is really important. Never tell your partner, you're going to be so mad when I tell you this, because all <laughs> you've done is set them up to be mad and they'll be mad no matter what you tell them. So tell them you are gonna so laugh when you hear this <laughs> and then tell them the really funny thing like you wrecked the car or ruined their favorite Letterman sweater. <laughs> you are just giving us great advice. <laughs> um, um, I didn't freak out because I didn't go out for Valentine's Day, but I know a lot of women would get really upset about it. Um, what, what should women avoid doing to push a man away? Like, well, you know, my theory is, is if you have to feel like you're pushing somebody away, then they're really not the right person for you. And I say take advantage of being in charge of your own life. So if your partner's not the one to make plans for you or to make reservations, make them yourself and invite him to go along. Or say, hey, I've done a really great thing for us for Valentine's Day. I'd like you to partake in this activity with me and allow them to go along and find something that they like too. If they like video games or something like that, plan, hey, let's play video games for an hour and the winner buys. Make it a little fun. All That's right. good. Well, Andrea has given us some excellent tips on our relationship. We'll be right back with more tips with her. Welcome back. We're here with Andrea Miller once again, and she is excellent with the relationship tips. We've talked about Valentine's Day, where some things we can do, but now we're going to get more into the relationship side, more in a corporate setting, on the job, like what are the do's and don'ts. Right. A lot of times people are really perplexed with that. They're like, wow, you've talked about interpersonal relationships and sexuality for the last 20 years, and now you're talking about business relationships. How, how does that all work? Well, it's actually quite easy because when you think about prospecting for new clients and engaging in a sales contract with someone or keeping that client for life, it's really like uh, uh, parallels are real relationships. So think about when you're prospecting, it's like dating. So how do you go to, the, you know, like you don't wanna go to a bar to find a Christian gentleman, right? So in business, you don't wanna go to somebody who wants to buy fishing lures and go to some place um, that's uh, only for cat toys or something <laughs> like that. You wanna make sure that your clients are the right kind of people that you'd want to meet. And then when you ask somebody to engage in a sales contract with you, you're really asking that person to marry into your company and to be with you and to be invested with you. So they need to know who you are and they need to get to know you really well so that they can make that kind of commitment with you. Because that's really a lot that you're asking of someone. How do you keep these businesses hot for you then? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, thank you. So we talked before about how do you keep your businesses hot for you? And that's true. If you're in business and you've been in business, and you've had a client or a partner in that business for a long time, to keep them excited about business is you need to continually talk to them or, or find out what it is that makes them tick. Because the last thing you want is for them to be checking out the new market down the street with better technology <laughs> or some new device that maybe you can't compete with. And the next thing you know, you have business infidelity. Mm -hmm. And that's really difficult when your clients aren't loyal to your company. So some of the things that you can do are really simple, like um, spending some extra time to get to know them in between holidays. A lot of people are really good at sending a birthday <laughs> card. Your dentist probably sends you a Christmas card every yeah. year, right? But I've never had a dentist contact me in the middle of the year and say, you know, like, February's Happy Smile Month. I don't know if that's Happy Smile Month, but if it was and they said, you know, it's really important to us that you have a great smile, or if they were to say, hey, Andrea, I know that, um, or how about you? They say, hey, we see you guys anchoring here, being hosts on the BG News. How great for you to have your teeth whitened again this <laughs> spring, so we'd love to see you to have a beautiful smile while you're on camera. Wouldn't that make you appreciate them more? My dentist texts me happy birthday. Yep. So. <laughs> and it appreciate, awesome. I appreciate it, so yeah. It is really nice. What are some other things you can do? Well, some other things in business to make people happy about being with you and being committed to your relationship is to take some extra time to know personal things about them. Know who their kids are, their dog's names, you know, whatever. And, what you, and their hobbies in particular. One of the greatest tips I found for one business is uh, late at night I told him if he ever happens to see an infomercial about fishing lures, he should send a little <laughs> note or a text or an email, whatever that client, however they like to be contacted is the best way to do that. And let them know, hey, I saw this really great infomercial on fishing lures, lures, and I wanted to remind you that we need to look at your portfolio again so that we can increase your finances so that you have the most money in the bank so you can live that dream vacation after you retire and go fishing and really have the wealth that you want in your life. And so Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some things that you do for your business to keep your clients happy or, you know, coming back 
for your good advice. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, I actually have another part of my business, IgniteYourRelationships.com. We also have a division that's a publishing company and a publicity company. So one of my publicity clients, uh, right now I just had my graphic designer design her a thank you card with her graphic and logo from her new book on it. And she has, uh, unless she sees this program, she has no idea she's <laughs> going to be receiving that as an extra bonus. It's not something that she paid for. It's not anything she invested in. It's something that I'm doing special for her as a thank you gift for her for her business. That's really thoughtful. Yeah. How did you come up with all this? Well, a lot of this stuff comes through years of research um, from going to uh, college for years <laughs> and years and continually learning. It's always been my adage that you can never stop learning. And there's so much to know and so much value to learn about people, to build relationships. And really, relationships is the key. If you don't connect with other people, then how are they supposed to connect with you? And how are they going to know you, like you, and love you, and invest in you or your products unless they know who you really are and what you have to offer? And that's one of the things that you guys do well, because you know your studio audience, and you know how to connect to them. And so they trust you to give them good weather and to good tips about Facebook and so forth like that, and they appreciate you. That's good. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, what could you tell students about, what, what, do you, what would you wish that they knew about this, um, starting okay. off? like to begin with this. All right, so the number one thing I would want students to know about relationships, whether it's in business or their interpersonal lives, is that you have to talk to people and be their friend in order for them to want to be a friend to you. <laughs> and I know that can be very challenging and difficult because they say, oh, how do we do that? How do we talk to people? And really, it's easy. You say, hi, my name's Andrea. And then you talk about whatever's around you and ask them a question and allow them to respond. And then you just smile. If they don't want to talk to you, they'll walk away. And if they do, you'll have a beautiful relationship if only for the moment but maybe for a lifetime well, thank you well, well I, we <laughs> again this is Andrea Adams Miller from igniteyourrelationships.com we'll be back to talk about wine tasting <laughs> welcome back we're here with Brett Northcutt he's gonna uh, talk to us about wine tasting thank goodness I'm 21 <laughs> I am not 21 so I'll just be getting tips for my 21st <laughs> birthday absolutely so tell us a little bit about wine tasting Okay, um, well, it's a, as, uh, as we mentioned uh, before in the last segment about lifelong learning, uh, wine is the same thing. Um, I've been a student of wine. I've studied, um, I've, I've studied uh, wine for about six, seven years now. Uh, received some professional certifications through the uh, Wines and Spirits Education Trust and through the Society of Wine Educators. Um, I got into wine actually when I was in culinary school. I became uh, the TA for the class after I went through it. It was notoriously the most difficult class because uh, there's, like I said, there's just a wealth of information and it's always changing. Uh, that's, a, that's the thing about wine. So uh, I did very well in the class, stayed on, tutored the class uh, throughout my bachelor's uh, degree there, and then continued my uh, studies afterwards. So um, there's, there's a lot to know. Um, and again, I feel like I'm, I'm just scratching the surface. So to, to come on to, to a show and say, <laughs> let's sum it all up in uh, uh, a couple minutes is, is kind of hard to do. Yeah. Absolutely. So Where do we begin? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, one of the things that uh, where we begin actually here on campus is we have a, a culinary series. We're actually doing, um, uh, I've done three wine tastings so far, and I started with the basics of, of wine. Um, this is, uh, I did the, my first class was the introduction to the five basic styles of wine. So I, um, I talked about uh, the production of white wine, um, red wine, rosé wine, sparkling wine, and fortified wine, the five basic types. So most wines will fit into one of those categories, right? So we talked about methods of production, regions, history, that type of a thing, and we brought in samples to uh, taste and paired those up with food as well. Um, I've also done some bi uh, business etiquette uh, wine classes uh, for students who are going into the business world and generally are going to be you know, out on business meetings and things like that. What are the do's and don'ts, dining etiquette, that type of a thing? Um, you know, so, you, so you can look like you have a certain level of sophistication and actually know nothing. You, know, you just follow a couple of basic guidelines, that type of Score. thing. Score. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right. um, so the next one I'm actually doing is uh, next month on the 23rd, on Saturday. Um, it's going to be all about sparkling wine. So um, we're going to taste. Uh, we're going to taste yeah. five or six bottles of sparkling wine from around the world. Um, oh, wow. we're gonna, uh, they're going to be made from different grapes, different levels of of sweetness, uh, dry, off dry, uh, sweet, that type of a thing. I'm also going to show um, uh, a sparkling. I'm looking for a sparkling red wine, actually, too, which is some people. 
something that's sort of off the beaten path. Most people mm -hmm. have never seen this, but Australia is actually really big right now. They're making, a, they sell what they call the black bubbles, right? So it's actually a red wine that they, it undergoes a second fermentation. <laughs> that Sounds that, ominous. Yeah, <laughs> so Very. The, the black bubbles, right? Um, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, off the beaten path. Most, most people have never seen that, you know, uh, a red wine that, you know, has uh, the, the carbonation. A little bubbly. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah the, the bubbly, you know, and it's, it's, uh, can, it can be a little sweet, too. Um, so it's actually a really nice wine for dessert, and, um, you know, uh, it, it, pairs, it pairs really well with a, a wide variety of foods. So um, that's what we're going to cover in the class um, uh, next month. Uh, what, I've what I've done today is, so I brought a bottle of sparkling wine. Okay. Along with us today. Red or white? Uh, now there, I know there's both. <laughs> ab ab yeah, absolutely. Uh, most sparkling wine is all going to be white or <laughs> or uh, or rosé, right? Which is uh, what we call like pink wine or blush or something like that. Which is generally um, they have either added a small amount of red wine to the white wine to actually just turn it a pink color, mm -hmm. or they're actually using a um, they're actually using a red wine, uh, a, a base rosé wine that they've uh, under that's undergone a second fermentation as well. Okay. Um, so what we've got here is, uh, this is a sparkling wine, it's actually from New Mexico. Oh, and one distinction too that I like to make uh, with people about sparkling wine is, uh, most people just generically refer to it as champagne, mm -hmm. right? Where uh, champagne is sort of a, it's a protected name, you know, it's a region in France that if, if, it's, if it's produced there, it can be called champagne. If it's not produced there, they really don't like you to call it champagne, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, it's like somebody making a, a ham in Canada and calling it a Virginia ham or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like, gotcha. no, no, that comes from this region, this region only. So, um, so if it's not from Champagne, it's called sparkling wine. So, okay. um, but what we brought today is that I brought a sparkling wine actually from New Mexico. Um, it's uh, the producer's Gruet. And what we can see here on this label is it says uh, method Champenois, right? And this basically means Champagne method to you. So this means that the bottle, uh, this particular sparkling wine, is made in the same way that they make sparkling wine in Champagne. Because mm -hmm. there's many different ways to make a sparkling wine. Because really all you're doing is introducing more, uh, you're making a wine, introducing more yeast uh, to the wine, so that way it undergoes a second fermentation. And then after fermentation, we know carbon dioxide is the byproduct of that. So what they want to do is they seal it and they trap all the carbon dioxide in it. So that way the carbon dioxide becomes dissolved within the wine, and this is what gives it its sparkling nature, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's cheap ways you can do that too. Like, uh, like soda, you know what I mean? <laughs> like they, they put the soda in there in a big tank, they seal it, pump CO2 into it, and out it goes the other side, right? So yeah. it's a very cheap way to make that. Where in Champagne, every single individual bottle is, undergoes its second fermentation. So basically what that means is the second fermentation took place in this very bottle. How um, long does that generally take? Uh, the, the firm, well, generally, um, the, the fermentation will take uh, a few weeks, and then they're generally aged uh, after that for at least six months to a year. Some uh, top quality champagnes are aged for decades, you know, uh, before they are disgorged or they allow the, the yeast, the, the expired yeast that's, uh, that's undergone the second fermentation, they have to get rid of that, obviously. So generally what they do uh, in champagne is, like I said, every individual bottle uh, is, is disgorged. So what they do is they freeze the neck of the bottle they open it and then uh, the pressure shoots out the sediment and then they quickly seal that and top it off with a little bit of the wine and it's corked, caged, and then sold that way. So, All right. <laughs> uh, so that's what you'll see, um, uh, that's what this term means, method champenois. Made in the same style as they do in champagne, meaning that the second fermentation took place in this exact bottle that you're buying. Should we open it? I, I think we probably should. All right, um, you guys can tell me how it tastes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> One other thing about this wine too is we mentioned um, uh, different styles. This one you're going to see it says Blanc de Noir, right? Meaning white from black. Meaning that this particular, the wine is white, however it was made from red grapes, right? Oh. So this is actually a sparkling Pinot Noir. But you're going to say Pinot Noir, well that's a red grape. Well, you're going to see it's actually white because the, they never took the, uh, the, the skins never made contact with the wine. So that way the skins will actually give red wine its color. Because most all grape juice is all white, no matter if the grape is red or not, right? So that's what gives red wine its color. All right. So what are we doing? Wrapping it up here. All right. Okay. So <laughs> one thing that's uh, one thing that's uh, that you want to do about sparkling wine is uh, obviously always have your hand over it, right? Because this thing is under a lot of pressure, right? So have your hand over top of it. We're going to loosen the cage, right? This is about six turns on the cage there. The next thing that you always want to do is you always want to point the bottle away from whoever's opening it, right? All right. Everybody's 
<laughs> I'm nervous. Everybody's nervous, right? All right. Okay, so you, about a 45 degree angle. You want to point the bottle away from you. And you just want to give the bottle a little, you want to twist the bottle. 30 seconds. <coughs> I am so excited to try. <laughs> I'm very excited to try this wine now. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. He's going to pour up a jackal in a glass. Absolutely. Right. So let's taste this. Have a little bit there. Okay. We'll have a little bit here. Thank you so much. No problem. Cheers. And cheers. Wow. I hope that's good for you guys. We want to thank wow. Chef Northcuff for coming in. And we'll see you guys tomorrow at 5.30 for our normal news show. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you. Good night.